Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Companies who promise to eliminate tax debts sometimes leave taxpayers high and dry. Because to believe that guy, you must have been high. And obviously the scammer didn't leave you with any more beer money. Hence the term high and dry. Actually, that's probably not where the term comes from. Honestly, I would think you would be worse off having been left high and wet because high mountains are like cold. And if you were both really high and really wet, you'd freeze. So you can just thank your lucky stars you were left high and dry instead of high and wet. My lucky star's name is Julia. Thank you, Julia. But now that I think about it, they most likely use the term high and dry simply because it rhymes. I propose to the IRS committee replacing the term high and dry with the phrase wet and upset. It's far more accurate. When people hear the term high and dry, they're more likely to picture a mountain climber who successfully climbed his way to the top, resulting in him being high, dry, and happy. And that would mess up the whole high IRS headline possibly promoting companies who promise to eliminate taxes. They're like, hey, that, com that company promised to completely eliminate my taxes. We climbed that mountain together, resulting in us celebrating at the top. High and dry, baby. That's the way we do it. IRS Tax Tip 2022-103, July 7, 2022. As the old saying goes, when something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Taxpayers with outstanding tax bills might be tempted by businesses who advertise and offer to help them reduce their tax debt. These businesses, often called offer and compromise mills, make huge claims about reducing unpaid taxes for pennies on the dollar. Unfortunately, these companies sometimes don't deliver and charge large fees. So if you hear a commercial saying, if your tax debt is over this amount or something like that, then we can help you out. They're typically alluding to the tool of an offer and compromise, which is a legitimate tool, but only applicable in certain situations. It's also not the only tool that might be used if there's like an outstanding uh, tax debt. You'd have to take it basically on a case by case basis. But this is the one that typically would be alluded to. Now, the first thing you kind of want to note is obviously who are you doing business with? And that can be hard to tell when you look at like a commercial, for example, because that commercial might just be an advertising company that is generating leads and then is going to be selling those leads to various firms. So the person that you're actually contacting then might not be an actual the actual company that's going to be working on your offer and compromise. And if they're a large advertising firm, they're probably going to take a big chunk of profit in that and just in that kind of part of the transaction, too, which could lead to basically higher fees for it. So you want to know uh, who you're who you're working with. You'd like to be working with your CPA firm if you could, although a lot of CPA firms and tax preparers may not you know, specialize in the offer and compromise, but they might be able to recommend you to someone directly instead of going through like a like an advertising lead generating kind of process, which would be more likely you would think to increase the fees. Also note that this offer and compromise is laid out pretty explicitly on the IRS website. So, so you might still need kind of help to gather the data and stuff like that. But if you want to get a general idea of what it actually is before you uh, so that you can be an informed customer, just like you'd like to be an informed person when you're working on your taxes or buying a home or any other any other kind of thing. And it's laid out pretty clearly on uh, the IRS website. So an offer and compromise with the IRS can help some taxpayers who can't pay their tax bill. So if someone has a big tax bill and they're thinking about this offer and compromise, they can click here and they can <clears throat> they can see what it entails. Note that <clears throat> the basic fundamentals of it would be that it has to be a situation where, where both the person who's owed the money and the person who owes the money are both better off, meaning the IRS has to kind of, you can imagine them needing to be better off in the offer and compromise. How could the IRS possibly be better off by lowering your tax debt? Well, if they determine that you, there's no possible way that you're going to pay it. I mean, if you if you owe like thirty thousand dollars and you're you're no longer working, you're retired, you know, and and basically your life expectancy is not that long. For example, you might be in a situation where the IRS it would be more likely or more advantageous to them 
to basically lower the tax at that point in time, right? Because they don't expect to be paid. So you can imagine what they would want to, in order to prove that they would want personal financial statements. They would want to know what's your balance sheet, what's your income statement, give me your bank account statement, for example, let's see your last transactions, what are your monthly expenses? If you're living uh, in a really expensive house and you have are driving around a hundred thousand dollar car or something like that it's less it's a lot less likely the irs is going to say oh yeah you just you know you deserve us to eliminate this tax debt that is here it's because you could probably pay it if you really wanted to right it's going it, to that's the kind of thing that you would imagine an offer and compromise to be now note that the other kind of thing where area that people often get in trouble is they go from a w-2 business and they start working as a sole proprietor and then they don't report their taxes and uh and the irs just bills them based on 1099s that were received for the business now the issue there is that the irs is billing the people on gross income instead of net income because they only have the the top line that the 1099s and all your expenses for the business would be deductible but because you didn't file the taxes if this was the case if someone didn't file the taxes then they didn't get the deductions so in that case, you might be able to substantially lower the, and, and that happens a lot with like, if you're like a construction company and you're like, you know, your profit margins are not that big, right? There, and, and you have a lot of these costs that you didn't report, then that could lower the, the tax bill a lot. So that's the other thing, the other big one that you kind of want to keep in mind if someone says, hey, I got the IRS is telling me I owe them this ton of money. Well, you know, what's the structure? Is it a business structure? Did you not file? Did, is it, did you have, deductions that you didn't take and then and then if that's the case then you can go into the offer and compromise okay so in an offer and compromise is an agreement between a taxpayer and the irs that settles a tax debt for less than the full amount owed so the offer program gives eligible taxpayers a path toward paying off their debt when they otherwise couldn't or would face financial hardship the oic offer and compromise mills that are dishonest take advantage of taxpayers lack of knowledge to make a quick buck the OIC mills urge people to hire their company to file an OIC application, even though the taxpayer won't qualify. So notice you should be able to get a pretty good idea if someone would qualify for an offer and compromise, you know, you know, from a, from a few questions, right? You know, how, what's the nature of your tax debt? And, uh, and then, and then what's the nature of your current financial position, right? If you're driving around a hundred thousand dollar car, if you've got a lot of assets, if your income is fairly steady and you could pay off the debt, but you, but you're not, then, then it's less likely that you, that they're going to take the offer and compromise. You could still file for one. So the IRS is basically saying here that they're getting people firing, filing offer and compromises. They clearly have no, uh, no ability to, to go through. And what happens is then they collect money, they file the offer and compromise, the IRS then rejects it. That whole process could take months, you know, it could take a long time for that to go through. And so they just, so they'll just kind of keep you on the hook until it doesn't, and finally it doesn't go through. And what you end up getting at the end of the day is just gonna be a, a payment plan that's gonna be set up, which, which you know, that's fine if that's all you can do, but you, you, that, that you could, you know, you, you could have done that at a lot of cheaper cost if, if you could have determined that you didn't need, you wouldn't be qualified for an offer and compromise up front. So they often charge big fees to prepare applications that they know the IRS will deny. This unfair practice wastes taxpayers' time and money. Taxpayers who do qualify for an OIC can get the same deal working directly with the IRS without the extra fee. So it is kind of complicated to do an offer and compromise, but you know, if you want to put in the time and look at it, I would at least look at it to get an idea of it. Go to your CPA that you trust and, and possibly get help and guidance there. But they got it pretty laid out so you can you can do it on your own if you want. The OIC mills that are dishonest are a problem all year long, but they step up their advertising after the filing season ends when taxpayers are trying to resolve their tax issues. So here's what taxpayers considering an OIC should know. Individual taxpayers can use the IRS's official, I'm sorry, offer and compromise pre-qualifier tool. There's a link to that here so you can check it out to see if they are eligible. When a taxpayer is ready to apply, they can watch the OIC video playlist. There's a link to that here that will lead them through the steps and forms to calculate an, applic an appropriate offer based on their assets, income, expenses, future earnings potential. So you're basically trying to say, hey, look, I can't pay the debt 
uh, be based on my financial conditions, I'm, I would like to lower it. And that's kind of the offer, right? So now you're saying, could you lower it? And they're, and they're gonna approve it or not approve it. So taxpayers can make an offer based on their true ab ability to pay. Applying does not guarantee that an IRS will accept the taxpayer's offer. So it's an offer, right? So they can accept it or deny it. And again, if, if your financial conditions look good, if you're a young person and you're, you're healthy, and uh, and even if you know and and you have some assets, right? You're less likely that the IRS is going to say, "Well, I think you can pay off the debt," right? In that situation, more it's more likely that they're not going to accept your offer. Like, could you eliminate my tax debt? You know, I'm a 25 year old driving around in my hundred thousand dollar car. You know, I'm doing great, but I just don't want to pay my. Well, that's probably not going to work, right? So it's got to be a situation where where you know you would you, you know. Any case, finding reputable tax help. People who want help from a reputable tax professional can review choosing a tax professional page on irs.gov to find information about tax preparer credentials and qualifications. They can then use IRS directory of federal tax return preparers with credentials and select qualifications to find a preparer by type of credential or qualification. There's a link to that. More information at the links below. There's an offer and compromise, offer and compromise pre-qualifier tool, offer and compromise irs videos the form 656 offer and compromise there's links to all that stuff here uh it really is you know they got a lot of stuff on it if you want to research that topic it's specialty kind of area so a lot of tax preparers aren't uh aren't as adapt at that area because a lot of cpa firms for example deal with higher income individuals less likely to come across an offer and compromise but it's pretty it's it's laid out here on the the irs website pretty good